Hello, Geometry, and welcome to Unit 8. I'm just going to give you a heads up ahead of time. Um, a lot of people struggle with this unit. Um, typically, we did this one first, second semester, but we switched it with the trig, and so um, maybe it'll go better this year. We'll see, but um, I'm just letting you know ahead of time, you really need to know these definitions that I'm going to give you, okay? You need to know the characteristics that go with them. So what we're doing today, this one's not going to seem tough. It's classifying quadrilaterals and then using the characteristics of special quadrilaterals to find missing side lengths and angle measures. So the focus, though, is more the types of quadrilaterals. So first of all, what is a quadrilateral? It's a four-sided polygon. All right, there are many types of quadrilaterals with defining characteristics. Okay, uh, the first one, and we're going to jump right into these on lesson two, is a parallelogram. What makes a parallelogram? Well, it is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Okay, a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. So in a rhombus, the opposite sides are parallel. But they also have this characteristic. All four sides are congruent, so they're all the same length. Okay. The third one, a rectangle is a parallelogram. So it's also a parallelogram, right, with four right angles. So it's a special type of parallelogram with four right angles. Okay, the fact that it's a parallelogram means the opposite sides are parallel. All right. And then the last one is a square, not the last one, but the last parallelogram is a square. A square is a parallelogram. Again, it's another parallelogram with four congruent sides. Okay, so if I stop right there, I'm describing a rhombus. But then I say, and four right angles. So I'm describing a rectangle there. So a square is a combo of a rhombus and a rectangle. All of them, all four of these are parallelograms though, okay? Um, and we're gonna do a whole lesson on special parallelograms um, in lesson four, all right? There's a few more quadrilaterals we're gonna look at. The next one is a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral, it's not a parallelogram. With two pairs of adjacent sides congruent, and no opposite sides congruent. All right, so I'm gonna draw a kite real quick. So the adjacent sides here and here are congruent and the adjacent sides here and here are congruent. That is what makes it a kite. Um, and notice that the opposite sides are not congruent. All right, so this and this are opposite sides. Those are not congruent. If they were, it would be a parallelogram. Okay, um, last two, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The other pair is not parallel, okay? And then within trapezoids, you have special trapezoids. You have an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid whose non-parallel sides are congruent. So I'll draw a trapezoid. This is a trapezoid. This is not an isosceles trapezoid because these two sides are not congruent. A, an isosceles trapezoid is the one that you're used to seeing. These are parallel and these are congruent. Okay. So those are the quadrilaterals we are going to be dealing with in this unit. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all that and move down. Classify the quadrilateral below with as many names as possible. So I'm going to look for defining characteristics of this. So as I'm looking at this, I see four congruent sides. That's what those things mean. What is a parallel or what is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides? Okay, so that would be a rhombus. But if it's a rhombus, right, it's also a parallelogram. 
right? Because all rhombuses are parallelograms. So I said as many ways as possible. So I have rhombus and parallelogram. It's also a four-sided figure, so it's a quadrilateral. It That figure there is all of those things. Okay. What is the most precise name for the figure above? Well, the most precise is the one that has the most characteristics. So it's a parallelogram, but it's also a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So the most precise way to name this is a rhombus. Okay. Last one for this video. This video is pretty short. Find the values of the variables given that the figure is a rectangle. I'm telling you it's a rectangle. What does that mean? It's got all angles are 90 degrees. And that's going to help me solve for y and x. y first, because 3y plus 12, I can say without question, is 90 degrees. And then I can solve for y. I think you get 26 there. And now that I have y, I can plug that in here. That's 8x plus 26. And that also equals 90. So subtract 26, you get 64, and x equals 8. Okay, that, again, this video probably seemed pretty easy. Um, I'm going to make it a little harder with some of the questions I ask. So just be ready for that.